Good afternoon, Sean here from Mountains Garage. I received several viewer requests uh, asking for the recipe on how to build a TH400 to withstand 800 to 1000 horsepower. That's the range I typically build them for. Uh, you can go a lot higher. Uh, they haven't yet found the limit of the Turbo 400 if you replace enough parts. I mean, in Pro Mod, it's one of only a few choices for a transmission. And they're making 3,500 horsepower, who knows how much power they're making, running mid threes and low fives in the quarter miles. It's an incredible transmission. Amazingly in reach for the average guy with a couple hundred dollar core and some parts. Don't be fooled into thinking that this is a pro mod transmission, but at the power level we're talking about today, it's very comfortable. Probably much higher. There's many cases where a stock case Turbo 400 is running low fours in the eighth mile. So they're very capable. Before aftermarket shafts and parts and gear sets became available, this is what there was to use, and the reason all the parts became available is because the common parts that break on a regular basis, they were improved by the aftermarket. Another very popular question is Power Glide or Turbo 400? You're going to see today a Turbo 400 needs very little to withstand 800 to 1000 horsepower. A Power Glide pretty much needs everything. You're better off starting from scratch in most cases. By the time you buy an aftermarket case, tail housing, and gear set, or at minimum a gear set, and an input shaft and a hub for a power glide, you'd be well on your way to making this thing withstand 2,000 horsepower. I spent a few years racing top sportsmen. Uh, I ran a Lenko all but seven passes of that, so I didn't experience a lot of transmission failure. But typically after one qualifying session or one round, half the field has their power glides out for fixing them. I actually know a guy that did a same day comparison at a test session. He had his car set up for a power glide, swapped everything out to a Turbo 400, did not go any faster with the power glide, and his exact quote to me was, why bother with the power glide when the 400 doesn't break? And the power glide does. And I hate to come off sounding negative on power glides because I actually like them. They're nice and compact. And what they're asked to do, they do a really good job. And it kind of taught us a little bit about not needing so much starting line ratio as a power glide only has a 176 or a 180 first gear, where a Turbo 400 has a 248 and a 148 second gear stock. It made the converter work harder, and that, people have learned in the last 20 years, isn't such a bad thing. With small tire drag racing and street car type drag racing taken off in the last 20 years, where the cars are slightly heavier and the tires are smaller, it made the Turbo 400 even more popular because the aftermarket parts makers can fit different ratios in a 400 more so than Power Glide. The Power Glide, you kind of restrict it on space. With a 400, they can make so far about any conceivable ratio you can imagine. But we don't need that today. We're talking a transmission capable of 800 to 1,000 horsepower handling out on a regular basis without any trouble, which coincidentally kind of lines up with your Junkyard LS turbo setup. 800 to 1,000 is probably uh, livable before you have to spend a lot of money on aftermarket parts. The Turbo 400 is no different. At about that threshold, and that threshold changes all the time, you know, it, it's right around this, maybe a little more. You'll find out you'll be the guy behind the wheel. But after a certain level, not much beyond what we're talking about today, you need to spend a lot of money to make it compatible with more horsepower than that. Last spring and summer when I shot my other Turbo 400 videos, and there's a whole series if you don't mind going back to watching them, liking and subscribing and all that stuff, I had not joined, I didn't even know it existed, the DIY Turbo 400 page on Facebook. On that page are all your industry giants, if you will, the owners of all the American-made aftermarket Turbo 400 parts manufacturers are on there answering tech questions pretty much daily. Uh, 
do them a favor and you know, use a search function and don't ask the same simple question like what's the best filter, you know, 400 times. If you Google a search on this, not Google, but if you search on the Facebook page, your, answer, your question will probably be answered if you have something beyond that. Lots of people, regular people like me, and also the people that really know what they're doing will answer your question. It's an awesome page. I'm glad I'm a part of it. I wish I had been a part of it all along. Let's start with the case. They will all work for what we're going to do. There's some HD ones that have some thicker areas. Uh, the Oldsmobile Pontiac Buick Cadillac ones are sometimes stronger and most always have eight bolts, sometimes only seven. The number of pump, pump bolts is only important, of course, if you want to run an aftermarket bell housing. If you're going to run the stock bell housing on the case, for instance, this gray transmission is an eight bolt case that came with a six bolt pump. The pump itself isn't going to jump out of there because it only has six bolts. The only reason you want the eight is to bolt on your aftermarket bell housing after you cut the old one off. Down inside the case, in the very back, where you see those six small dots, that's where the thrust washer and a three tanged washer set on the back of the lower gear unit. You want to replace that with a roller baron and some shims to take up the end play. It's nothing but a turbo 350 pump baron. That's the GM pot number. That's what it looks like. It goes in black side down and the shims. One shim kit will probably do you a half dozen barons because it only takes a couple shims to come up with the correct thickness. I typically measure the original shim and spacer and subtract, excuse me, add about another five in my shim. So I'm taking about five thousandths out of it and I'll start checking right there for my rear end play. If you go online, like on eBay, you can buy a kit with the rear thrust bearing and the shim pack. $25 or $30, you can buy them independently. The Barons, 10 or 15, and a pack of shims. Probably going to cost about the same, but it'll give you enough shims if you buy more Barons to do more transmissions. It depends on how many you want to do. If you're doing one, buy the little kit. Moving ahead, your second gear or intermediate clutch pack lugs into the case. On the very outside edge of the snap ring right there, the center support lugs in back here. No problem there because it bolts up through the case. But second gear only has a flimsy snap ring around these lugs and there's a giant void right there with no lugs. At minimum, you need a thick snap ring. I would never reuse the, even pretty much in a stock transmission, the stock intermediate snap ring. It's prone to failure, even in a stock case. This is a spiral lock. It's actually two spiral locks in a package. This is an awesome piece. It spirals into the case. The extra thick snap ring works well also. Combined with a case saver, which bolts into the void I just showed you and supports the snap ring portion that's not supported originally. This is a must. It's the only weak link in the Turbo 400 case that fails on a regular basis is the second gear intermediate snap ring lugs. It will spit them out like checklets it's also possible to lock up the rear tires when this happens. It's unlikely, but it's possible. And that'd be a scary situation. So both these pieces here, maybe $75. Excellent insurance. So other than normal case prep, I've mentioned before, I drill and tap the vent fitting. I trim off the ears, give it a good deburring, and I flat file I use a stone on the valve body surface. Other than that, the case is race ready. I don't have a lower gear unit to show you, but I've gone over it several times if you go back to the old videos, but I do, on the output shaft, I machine off the o-ring groove so the yoke can slide all the way in without being restricted. If you're gonna run a roller tail housing instead of a bushing, they make a barren, you have to have a hardened yoke not required for what we're doing, I'm just mentioning it because we're here. You're all set with the stock bushing and a regular style yoke. Straight cut, planetaries, or helical cut. The straight cuts are not that hard to find. No tests exist that I'm aware of that make them actually better. I know General Motors spent money on them and only put them in the heavy duty trucks, leading you to believe they're better. But the... Helical planetary lower unit 
lasts at twice the horsepower level we're talking today, probably more. It's not a weak link. It's an awesome unit. There's very little issue there. Not a concern for what we're doing. So whatever you have, you have straight cuts, that's great. They're noisy, they claim. This one has it, I'm, I can't wait to try it. It's been a long time since I uh, drove a motor home with a Turbo 400, but, or a school bus. It's probably what it's gonna sound like, if you can hear it over the engine. But the helical stuff, the, the, the ones you're gonna find 95% of the time, just bolt it in, don't worry about it. You're good to go. The rear band, if you have one in nice shape that's OEM, use it, it's gold. You'll see it'll wear first on the opening on the inside. If you don't have that, and short of that, buy a Kevlar one. Good to go. If you run a case saver, you won't be using the forward band. You won't have engine braking in second gear. A small price to pay for not blowing the case up. Most all your aftermarket valve bodies, there are a few that'll retain the front band so you can have engine braking in second gear but I don't know what they do with the you know protecting the case I'm not sure what horsepower level that's made for moving on pistons I like aluminum because I can machine them and I can set my clutch clearance that way and they actually have a wider area to push on the first steel once again no test exists and I'm aware of that they're better in any other way if you, can build, if you build a transmission with steel pistons, it'll last just fine. I don't think it'll be a problem. My opinions go both ways. I buy these only because I can machine them easily. But they're readily available. Three pistons is probably going to cost you $150. The direct drum and sprag. Finding a factory Chevy round back drum that'll accept a 34 element sprag. They're getting harder to find. The go-to is a 97 and up 4L80E drum. They're all over the internet for about $100 refurbished. Comes with steels, the pressure plate, snap ring. A great deal. Important to remember, start your burnout in second and shift to high. Don't go one, two in the water box. And this will last a good long time. I mentioned in my other videos, this area here is actually slightly wider on the ADE drum because the 4L ADE has four intermediate clutches and steels. Not required at our horsepower level we're talking today. You can see dash six of machines, the aluminum piston. Now when you buy the ADE drum, it's gonna come with a molded piston. You gotta chuck that and put a turbo 400 piston in here. The molded one is not gonna work with your aftermarket valve body because it's gonna come with heavier springs. That's why this isn't in yet. When I buy a valve body, I have to put the return springs in here that are super heavy duty. You need a piston that'll accept that. The molded one will not. But a stock Turbo 400 average has five forward clutches in the forward, five in the direct, three in the intermediate. That'll far exceed our horsepower level we're talking about today. You don't need extra clutches. If you want them, I've showed you videos how to do that, and I'm telling you again now. You can machine the aluminum drum and add more. You're gonna need a rebuild kit. And in that kit, there'll be different choices of clutches. You can have smooth, you can have waffle. The kit's gonna come with two different thicknesses because forward and direct, while they will share the same clutch. And steel, they're different thicknesses from the factory. You can jumble them around to make up your clearances. As I've said in the past, the kit may not come with enough parts to accomplish what you wanna do if you wanna add clutches. But if you're running five, five, and three, your kit should handle that. Your actual choice of clutch material, many will argue it's really not that important. What is important is proper hydraulics, and this transmission will have an aftermarket valve body at this horsepower level, 800 to 1,000. We have an aftermarket valve body. And in that valve body kit, whoever made it has gone through the research, and it's going to come with a pressure regulator spring for the pump, like the springs I just mentioned in the direct drum. It's a kit, it's been thought out, well thought out, and they work well. And then increase in hydraulic pressure is pretty much gonna make any clutch live. That and proper assembly. I can almost guarantee you the instructions that come with your aftermarket valve body, whether it's a manual valve body or a transbrake valve body, will instruct you on dual feeding the direct. Popular subject, you're gonna leave out the middle seal 
behind the piston. And while you're at it, go ahead and leave the one out of the forward. Don't need the middle one. Let the whole piston fill up faster. I covered this in other videos, but to make this longevity-wise, make the clutches last, regardless of the materials, you want to have a lot of clamping force. And the valve body itself probably has the dual feed mod down on that end, so you're leaving a seal off the center support, you're leaving a seal out of the center of this drum, and you're blocking it in the valve body, whether the valve body separator plate did that, or they have you drive a plug-in, it'll be in the instructions, I'm sure. Unless you buy the Chinese valve body, then you're on your own. Buy an American-made one, they'll probably walk you right through it, or you can talk to the guys that made it. That's just a fact. With the increased pressure from the spring you installed in the pump, I go ahead and do the engine thrust protection mod. It's in my other videos. It's all over the internet to try to protect the engine. This isn't something that's going to make the transmission last longer, but it'll push on the thrust bearing of the engine less by doing a simple mod to the back side of the pump. This transmission has a billet internal solenoid transbrake valve body. Uh, it's a very popular one. It's sold by a whole bunch of people. It's also the last one I'm going to install since Joining the DIY Turbo 400 site on Facebook, I can now see that there's an American-made choice, be it the Jake's Performance or the ATD Automatic Transmission Design and others in the same price range. And if I need help, it's available, no problem. If you have a problem with this valve body, you're on your own. But to be fair, I've installed probably 10 of them and I've had zero issues once I figured out the poor instruction sheet. The forward hub. This is a stock Turbo 400. This is a 4L80. They look slightly different, but the easiest way to tell the difference is to ring it, ring it like a bell. This will be pretty dull. This will have a much higher pitch. If I had an aftermarket one, it also has an even higher pitch than this one. When you ring it like a bell, it's very high, very strong. 4L80E Forward hub is an excellent upgrade. Direct interchange. And at our horsepower level today, it's a good choice. Even if you buy an aftermarket one and they're about $100. Probably somewhere around 1,200 horsepower and up, you can start worrying about the input shaft, the intermediate shaft, and eventually the output shaft. And you need a book. Blueprint a transmission far as clearances, correct bushing clearance, build yourself a sound transmission. That's a very important factor in making it last at any horsepower level, but especially the higher you go, the more risk for damage. When you're shopping for a rebuild kit, make sure you have bushings in there or buy them separately. The whole bushing kit's like 20 bucks. Excellent insurance. Kind of hard to change. And you have to use a seasoned transmission builder can look at a bush and measure it Compare it to the specs in here, and sometimes he may choose to replace, he or she may choose to replace the whole pipe that has a good bushing in it, or he may go ahead and change it, he, she. So to recap, we rollerize the output shaft. We put a heavy-duty snap ring and a case saver on the intermediate clutches. We put a heavy-duty sprag. That also has a spiral lock I like to use. A good sound rebuild kit with good quality clutches and an aftermarket valve body kit that's going to come with increased hydraulic pressure spring and a few upgrades they're going to recommend you do. And that's it. This thing is ready to whale. All the normal things like a deep pan, uh, nice cool lines that aren't going to burst because you've increased the hydraulic pressure. I run AN fittings or steel. No rubber and hose clamps. That's a fire waiting to happen. A nice cooler that has a mechanical connection, not hose clamps. All the normal things you do, a lock and dipstick. Whoop, way to go. That's a requirement by the rules, so you don't spit fluid all over the track. More importantly, under your rear tires and spread you all over the track. A shield over the center of the transmission, be it a blanket or an aluminum shield or an aftermarket case. A flywheel shield. Or an aftermarket bell housing. That's what an aftermarket bell housing does for you. If your bell housing's cracked, obviously it fixes that problem, but more importantly, you don't have to run a shield that bolts around the V of the bell housing. You can just bolt the bell housing on the engine and you're done. You put an aftermarket case combined with an aftermarket bell housing, 
you don't have to run any other safety shields. It fits in the stock hole that a Turbo 400 did. The shields are kind of cumbersome sometimes, depending on the body they're going in. And that and lots of other reasons, strength-wise, the aftermarket case is a great deal. They're kind of hard to come by right now, but they're coming back to market. So that's it. Find yourself a good core that's not full of water. Buy a good quality rebuild kit with everything you need. An aftermarket valve body and a few other trinkets. And build yourself a reliable transmission. Or have your local guy do it for you.